Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the pink room. My name is Faith and the pink room is simply any room where I add my pink decor and I'm simply having a Jesus centered conversation. Sometimes it may just be me solo or I may have a special guest on um, just having conversations about their journey in Christ, how they got to where they are with their relationship with the Lord. But today is just me. And today I'm going to be talking about how I like to study the word of God. And so I'm going to read a chapter of the Bible with you. I may, I may or may not get through the whole chapter based on what stands out to me. I didn't pre-plan pre this. Um, I just kind of opened up the Bible and started flipping through the New Testament. And Philippians stood out to me. And so I'm just going to read Philippians chapter 1. And I just want to share with you all what I do as I'm studying the word of God. Um, I just recently received, uh, well not received, but bought this Bible for myself. Um, it is one of the best gifts that I, I could have ever given myself. It is the super giant print. And so it's like heaven on earth. It's just perfect. It just makes me want to read the word. Okay, so I'm going to read this with you guys. And I'm going to stop as something just hits my spirit. I know for some of you all who truly love the word of God, you have moments when you read the word and it's just like something that you read. It just makes your, some people call it like your baby leap on the inside of you. I don't have a physical, a natural baby on the inside of me right now. I'm talking about my spiritual baby. My spiritual man, it leaps when I read certain things in the Bible. It just makes me fall in love with the Lord all over again. It makes me go, mm, that's good. You know, we all have those moments. So I'm going to start, but I'm going to start off in prayer. And this is just a cool tip for anyone who is just new at reading the Bible or um, maybe you um, find it challenging understanding the word of God. Always pray that God would open to your understanding. Ask God to open your understanding that you would understand, understand the scriptures, okay? And so, Father, I just give this time to you, Lord. I pray, God, that as I begin to read, Father, that you would open up my understanding Holy Spirit, would, would you reveal to me what the Father is saying about this word to me in this season of my life? In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And I just pray that everyone that comes across this video, Lord, that it would develop a hunger and a thirst in them, Father, for your word, Lord. God, I pray, God, that it would develop this, this desperation, Father, just to spend time with you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I have a pen and I have a color pencil. Not a high, but a color pencil, a pink color pencil. Um, because I am trying to hurry up and get this chapter in before my kids get home. So, I have my little stool here. That's why I'm so low. But let's start. So, this is the book of Philippians, chapter 1. All right, let's start reading. Okay, here we go. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. Um, and so what I do is I will always circle this because I like to, when I realize who this is being written to, I like to circle it so it can stay, stick with me in my heart and my mind. And it says, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. So basically what that means is that it's all the Christians in Philippi. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Philippi. I don't think it's Philippi, but... <laughs> So this is to all the Christians, the followers of Christ, in Philippi. All right. So to all God's holy people, y'all. Listen, when I read the when I read the Bible, I read the Bible. Like you can't just read all fast through the Bible. Like you gotta stop. Like the first time I read this, I didn't even realize that it said this. But it says to all God's holy people in Christ. You know, we live in a day a day and time where holiness is shunned away like holiness is is not the norm in this day in this time in society and culture but the bible says that when we're god's people we're holy people and so here we go to all god's holy people i'm circling god's holy to all god's holy people in christ jesus at philippi together with the overseers and deacons so he was speaking to the Christians and the overseers of that community and the deacons. So good. 
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. That was him speaking a blessing over them. He's saying, grace and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's declaring, he's declaring, they're declaring grace and peace to all those Christians in Philippi, right? And so here we go, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, y'all, that right there was a handful already. Already. I thank my God every time I remember you, right? And so if Paul and Timothy are writing to the Christians at Philippi, they are basically overseeing this group or this community of believers, right? They're encouraging them. They're, they're encouraging them. They're building them up, right? And so these are people that they have relationship with. And I love how they didn't just say that, I, you know, I remember you, but they said, I think... God, I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. Let's just pause there. So not only did they have relationship with these believers, right? But they were praying for these believers. They were interceding for these believers. And I don't know how many leaders I had that will view this video. I don't know how many pastors or apostles that may view this video, but it's so important that we cover the people who God has sent to us to shepherd over, to lead, to guide, to empower, right? And don't think, you know, if you're a pastor, don't think and don't think so box minded. Like, don't just think about your congregation, right? The Lord, the, the, the people who the Lord has sent you to shepherd over within your congregation. Think about those who you mentor. Think about those who you pour into on a daily basis. Those who call you on a regular to get godly wisdom and godly counsel, right? We need to be praying for them, interceding for them. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So the moment the moment they begin to partner with Jesus, the moment they begin to partner with the gospel, what? It says Paul and Timothy were praying for them with joy. Not out of obligation. They were praying with the joy of the Lord. Man, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this. That he who began a good work in you will carry it on into the completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. So what this is saying is that Paul and Timothy, is, Paul and Timothy is saying, believers that are at Philippi, I'm confident in this thing. Not only am I praying for you, but I'm confident that the one who began a work in you is faithful to complete it. Right. And we got to understand that this was a day and time where these type of believers suffered through much persecution. They endured much persecution, right? And there was a lot of idol worship in this day and time as well. And so it's easy to have the mindset of, oh, they may have received Jesus or they may have began to partner with the gospel. But there's no guarantee that they may continue to partner with Jesus in the gospel. No. They were confident that the work that God began in this group of believers, that he was going to finish it. It says that we'll carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He was confident that the Lord would keep them. And I just believe that as believers and as those of us who, those of us who are leaders, that we need to be confident that those who we're pouring into and empowering and encouraging, that God is going to keep them. That this, the work that God began in them, that he's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. Y'all, I will circle all out. Let me see. I thank my God every time I remember you. I in, my, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. I will circle that part because I love how it says that they always pray with joy because of your partnership. I underline that part. 
being confident in this i'm gonna circle that part because that part really sticks out to me being confident they were confident that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion of the day of christ jesus all right moving on it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since i have you in my heart and whether i'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel all of you share in god's grace with me god can testify how i long for all of you with a, with the affection of christ jesus so right here right here paul and timothy are expression expressing their their heartfelt gratitude for these group of believers joining the faith, partnering with the gospel, right? They're explaining to them, this is why I'm praying for you. This is why, this is why I'm confident that the Lord is going to complete the work in you. Because of God's grace. It says it is right here for me to it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel. All of you share God's grace with me. And so whatever these believers in Philippi were going through, there's grace available for them. And did you all hear what they said right here? Whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, the same grace that is available for the Christians at Philippi to go through whatever they're going through is the same grace that's available for Paul and Timothy to go through what they were going through. And it says, whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel. And that's what I mean about them being under such persecution in this day or time. But they recognized that there was a grace that was available to them. And a lot of times we think that grace is just um, God's mercy or God's forgiveness. So, but no, God's, God's grace is power. It's power, it's supernatural ability, resting on our natural ability, doing what we couldn't do in our normal or in our natural ability, right? And so there is, even if you go back to verse 2, it says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Christ Jesus. He was the, They were declaring grace and peace over this body of believers. Grace is power to do what God has called you to do. It goes way beyond your natural ability. And so, verse 8, God can testify how long, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless Blame, blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And so basically begin to expound, begin to expound. Now, the Bible doesn't necessarily say whether it's Paul or Timothy specifically writing this part, but we do know that in the beginning of Philippians, it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. So you may hear me saying he or they. I don't know if it's both of them writing at the same time. I don't know if they collab together and say, you know, let's encourage them with this, let's encourage them with that. But we do know that it's either Paul or Timothy. So whether or not I say he or they, just know that they are speaking to this body of believers, right? And so they are beginning to express what they have been praying for this body of believers. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Their prayer was that their love would, may, their, that, that their love would abound more and more in the knowledge and the depth, and depth of insight. And so what this was saying is that the love for the gospel, the love for Jesus will begin to abound more and more that they will be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. You, listen, I don't know if you realize how important or how vital it is or how much of a role your love of God has on 
your ability to discern good and evil, right? Or your ability to walk pure and blameless before the Lord. When you truly love God, when your love for him abounds and abounds, it grows deeper and deeper. The things that you did in the world before you gave your life to Christ, those things you will no longer be able to do willingly and freely when you're truly in love with the Lord. Because when you truly love someone, you do what is pleasing to them. And so I think that is a powerful prayer for leaders to pray over those who uh, we are mentoring or pouring into. That their love, that their love for the gospel, that their love for Jesus would just abound, would abound and abound, that it would grow deeper and deeper. It says that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. That their knowledge and depth of insight about the gospel and about God would begin to grow so that they would be able to discern what is best and may, ha may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Filled with the fruit of righteousness. Y'all, I'm trying to tell you, when you grow in the depths and the knowledge of God's law for you, it's impossible for you not to walk in the fruits of righteousness. I'm not saying that you won't ever make a mistake. I'm not saying that you won't ever get anything wrong, but there will be conviction on the inside of you. There is a desire on the inside of you to want to walk in the fruits of righteousness because you love God. Fill with the fruits of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And so I know that this video is already, I think it's like 16 minutes, but I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there because it's about to go into another section of Philippians 1. But I just wanted to share with you all how I just kind of read and dissect the word of God. And so I pray that this video just develops a hunger and a thirst in you to just want to read the word. It's so good. It's so good. I remember being in a season where I was just like, God, I really don't know. I don't know how to read the word or understand the word of God. And I remember I was at Bible study in college and I had my Bible with me. And all of a sudden, it was like I could understand the word. I didn't understand where it came from. I knew the Holy Spirit now, knowing what I know now, I knew the Holy Spirit had opened up my understanding of the Word of God. And from that point on, as like my love for the Word just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Um, and so, please, ask the Holy Spirit for understanding of the Scripture. Um, and I believe that as you learn or understand the Scripture more, it would develop a greater hunger and a thirst for you. And so... I pray that this blessed you, and I pray that that um, that even those leaders that had a chance to come across these, this video, that it would increase your prayer life and your intercession for those who you pour into. This is such. This is uh, Philippians chapter one, verses one through. I only got to verse verse eleven. So Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. This right here, verses 1 through 11, it gives us such a practical way, such insight of how we can pray and intercede for those who are pouring into it. So I pray that that blesses you on that end as well. Let me pray out as I go. Father, I just pray that you would open up the understanding of all of those, not just who would come across this video, but those who are having trouble understanding the word of God. I pray, God, that they would begin to understand the word of God, that you would open up their understanding, and that as they read, Lord, that you would just have the words just to jump off of the page and get into their hearts, Lord, and it would, it would just develop this hunger and this thirst for your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, if you want me to do more videos like this, let me know. Um, let me know. I'm always going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, but um, I believe that your suggestions will help me, you know, just plan for the Pink Room video since the Lord definitely confirmed that the, 
the season for the pink room is not over and I need to just do better planning. Um, and so let me know if you enjoyed this. I really enjoy it actually. Um, and it just makes me want to just cut this video off and just continue to read. But like I said at the beginning of the call, I just want to make sure that um, I'm done before my kiddos get home. Because once they get home, it's a wrap. It, it's a wrap. I know my mama's out there know what that means. Okay. So I love you guys. I pray that this really, really blessed you. And I'll see you next time.